Recently, a new Xbox was released. Oh, what's that? No one cares. Recently, Ashens made a video on a fake Switch, the Pow Kitty X2. People love fakes so much it did better than his video on the real Switch. His main complaints about the device was the buttons. They suck. Oh, but these are bloody unusable as well. Ah! Oh. Oh, could you have, they've got so much travel on them, you have to really push down and then spit on the screen. Sorry, everybody. Yeah, you push that one down, and then it's so far down, the other one's so far up, your thumb just hits it and it hurts you. Yep, I know we keep going on about it, but this is completely destroyed by the controls. He's not joking. They've got so much travel, I had to get a visa. Seriously, pressing these buttons is such a waste of energy. You have to press so far just to get a character to move. So how did this end up with me? Well, I was counting my rice when all of a sudden the sky eyes opened and he came to me and he said play the best song in the world or I'll leave. wrong one dear, dear Elliot, Elliot please, please make, make this make switch this less, bad. less bad right let's do this I bought the same type of surface mount component buttons used on the actual joy cons of a switch as well as that I bought replacement joy con buttons maybe we can use these ones instead let's take it apart After removing the motherboard, we can finally get to those pesky buttons. Let's take them all out and see what on earth is going on. Other yeah. Ah, would you look at that. There's so much material here to move, I had to get planning permission. Compare that to the original Nintendo ones. Whose idea was this? The way this button press works is by having two contacts on the motherboard which the rubber membrane then shorts to complete a circuit. The Joy-Con uses a different method which I will adopt to try and prove this. Switches. These give your buttons a far more definitive feel which gives you a nice tactile feedback. Just like the original. So let's solder these into place and see what happens. I got this first one the wrong way round, but I do fix this later on. Ah, much better. Now let's do the others. This works perfectly, however the buttons still have way too much travel. Unfortunately, we can't use these switch ones as they didn't fit. But we don't need to, let's just remove some of the material in the membrane. Absolutely spot on. Let's do all the others and see how it feels. I am done. I'm so, so pleased with the result. Um, you know the expression, you can't polish a turd? Well, I've just added a tiny, tiny, tiny little shimmer to it. It's not quite there, it's never gonna be that fully polished turd we all desire, but it's definitely far better than it was. So obviously we have massively reduced the travel in these buttons. It is far better, like absolutely 100% far better. The only one thing I would say that isn't fantastic is the cutting of the membrane is very difficult to do, and the reason that these buttons don't look completely level is because I haven't managed to get a really flush cut. It feels like a switch. The only way I would describe the difference uh, is that these are slightly looser, like they're slightly easier to, to press and they, you know, than, than this. I don't, I think that's just down to the fact that I've used maybe a more sort of resistive contact switch uh, compared to this one, which is really easy to press. But 
Um, I think that will loosen up over time. Uh, not that Stuart's going to use this for long enough for that to ever happen. Let's talk about the elephant in the room and one thing I haven't mentioned at all, and that's the joysticks. Uh, these things are beyond help. They would need to be completely replaced. The thing is with this Nintendo Switch one is it's sort of moving around like this, whereas this one moves around like that. So this actually has a sort of a center, a central part to it, which it rolls around, whereas this, the entire thing is actually moving like a 3DS or a PS Vita. And uh, unless you were to replace that with a 3DS or Vita style joystick, uh, this this one is, so, it is unhelpable because, you know, this one, it's rotating because it's cheap. Uh, I suppose the mechanism's not very good. Um, so one thing I would say is you're probably not going to want to use them uh, anyway because any game that would benefit from a joystick isn't going to emulate on this thing very well. Uh, what I mean is this is really going to be more geared towards sort of Game Boy and Mega Drive and NES and Super Famicom and all that kind of thing uh, where you wouldn't require a joystick anyway. But let's try and play a little bit of a game and I'll show you this thing working in a now far more improved state. So here we go, into a little bit of gameplay. And as you can see, oh crap, I chose the 50cc one so we're going really slow. But as you can see, it's working perfectly and it looks very adequate. It, you know, this is passable and this is enjoyable. The The biggest thing that I could definitely say is that that, that clickiness is very loud. Um, very, very loud. But that could maybe be changed with a slightly uh, less, I don't know, clicky resistive button. I'm sure they exist. As I said before, you can't polish a turd, but I've done a pretty good job trying, in my opinion. So the final thing for us to do is send it back to Stuart, because uh, obviously we need to hear what he thinks about it, because it was his thing uh, in the first place. So we're going to close it up. I'm going to send it off today. Hopefully he'll have it soon, and let's get his input. So, Elliot, you genius. Look at it. <gasps> hear the clicks. See, thumb isn't getting stuck under the buttons anymore. Amazing. Amazing. And... As we quickly jump into the game, we can discover very, very quickly that all your hard work and incredible effort and planning has somehow made it much, much worse. Like, I mean, you can't do like a Dragon Rush at all now virtually. Hang on, hang on, uh, no, hang on, let's try that again. No, no, it's almost impossible to move diagonally properly. Let alone, oh, look at that, I got one out, oh yeah, oh no, no. And Dragon Punch is just not happening really at all. Oh, look at that! Really messed it around, it happened. But yeah, uh, you can barely move at all now because the buttons need such incredible pressure in order to actually click and do anything. They kind of work for this side um, a little bit, but uh, overall, yeah, um, what can I say except all that hard work and effort has somehow made a bad thing much worse. I think really that encapsulates the whole of YouTube. Oh, well, that's not what I was expecting, and I don't think you were expecting that either. Well, I mean, maybe the uh, the buttons that I used weren't really made for that application. Maybe they were better off on a little device where you just press the thing to turn it on or something like that. Um, quick consecutive button presses to get a combination. Maybe the wrong kind of button. I'm sure the right kind of button is out there and does exist. I clearly should have done some more research and bought a few more different variations of them. Um, but yeah, I mean, in, a, in an application like Super Mario, it does work. At least I thought it worked because you're only really pressing one at a time. But anyway, I mean, it was a first prototype and hopefully the next one will be better. Let me know if you can think of any other different button types that I could have used. Maybe I should have just chop down the, the membrane slightly, um, and then that would have been enough. But I just wanted to make it feel more like the Nintendo Switch. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this video anyway. It's a learning curve for me, and uh, I hope it's been some entertainment for you. And um, I'll catch you all in the next video. Bye.